हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू द बी फार्म स्पेशल प्रोग्राम वेर वी गाइड यू टू स्टडी बेटर एंड इन स्मार्ट वे दिस इज स्वप्निल पाटिल हु इज गोइंग टू टेक वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इंटरेस्टिंग एंड इम्पॉर्टेंट टॉपिक ऑफ बी फार्म फोर्थ सेमिस्टर इन द यूनिट ऑफ कंपाउंडिंग ऑफ मेडिकेशन थ्री ऑफ द सब्जेक्ट फिजिकल फार्मसी फार्मसी प्रैक्टिस डिस्पेंसिंग एंड कम्युनिटी फार्मसी आर यू रेडी Our topic is divided in seven modules. Let's took overview of modules. Module one, that is suspension. Module two, emulsion. Module three, mixture. Module four, sprays. Module five, inhalation. Module six, paints. And module seven, that is the most important labeling of dispense product. Let's move to our module one. suspension definition of suspension pharmaceutical suspensions are the uni uniform dispersions of solid drug particles in the vehicle in which the drug has minimum solubility the internal phase consisting of insoluble solid particles having a range of particle size 0.5 to 5 micron which is maintained uniformly throughout the suspending vehicle with the aid of single or combination of suspending agent and the external phase which is suspending medium is generally aqueous in some instances or may be organic or oily liquid for non oral use particle size of the drugs may vary from one formulation to the another formulation depending on the physico chemical characteristics of the drug and the rheological properties of the formulation now friends we will move towards classification of pharmaceutical suspensions how you will going to classify that suspension system based on general classes like oral suspension externally applied suspension parenteral suspension based on proportion of solid particles that is dilute suspension and concentrated suspension in dilute suspension 2 to 10% weighed by volume solid content is there while in concentrated suspension 50% weighed by volume solid content is there then another category of classification of suspension is based on electrokinetic nature of solid particles that is flocculated suspension and deflocculated suspension another one of the good method of classification is based on size of solid particle that is colloidal suspension which is having size less than 1 micron while coarse suspension which is having size more than 1 micron while nano suspension in which it is 10 nanogram all these are classes of suspension now friends let's move towards reasons behind the formulation of pharmaceutical suspension first important reason is insoluble nature of drug in the delivery vehicle second to enhance the stability of drug candidate third to mask the bitter test of the drug candidate to achieve control or sustain drug release profile what are the examples of pharmaceutical suspensions the main examples comes like antacid oral suspension dry powders for oral suspension antibiotics in which analgesic for oral suspension anthelmintic for oral suspension antifungal category for the oral suspension what are the advantages first advantage of suspension it can improve the chemical stability of certain drugs example procaine penicillin g second advantage drug in suspension exhibits higher rate of bioavailability than other dosage form and bioavailability is in the following order that is solution are more bioavailable than the suspension which are more bioavailable than the capsule while capsules are more bioavailable than the tablet third most important advantage that is duration and onset of action can be controlled example protamine zinc insulin suspension while fourth advantage is suspension can mask the unpleasant bitter test of drug example chloramphenicol now let's move towards disadvantages first disadvantage is physical stability sedimentation and compaction can cause the problems second disadvantage is it is a bulky 
hence sufficient care must be taken during the handling and transport third disadvantage it is difficult to formulate while fourth one is uniform and accurate dose cannot be achieved unless suspensions are packed in unit dosage form these are all about advantages disadvantages now friends we will move towards the formulation ingredients with their examples used in suspension mainly in suspension the excipients and drug candidate is there drug candidate should be insoluble in vehicle while some excipients most important excipients like as mentioned suspending agent acacia carboxymethyl cellulose sodium while wetting agents polysorbate at acacia tragacanth alginate while preservatives like propylene glycol benzalkonium chloride antioxidants like ascorbic acid tocopherols some sweetening agents are also added in order to give the sweetening property like sucrose mannitol dextrose while for adjusting the ph buffers are added like citric acid is the most preferable used to stabilize the ph of suspension between 3.5 to 5.5 while acetate are used in percentage of 1 to 2% while citrates in 1 to 5% while phosphates in 0.8 to 2% while flavoring agents like raspberry pineapple and bubble gum those are used while coloring agents like white titanium dioxide blue brilliant blue while indigo carmine these are the dyes associated with the coloring agents vehicles used in suspensions are the aqueous distal water or non aqueous vehicles that is mainly for the topical purpose this is all about the suspensions and details of suspension now let's move towards the module 2 that is emulsion an emulsion is a mixture of two or more liquids that are normally immiscible like it is unmixable or unblendable so emulsions are the part of more general class of two phase systems of matter called colloids although the terms colloid and emulsion are sometimes used interchangeably emulsion should be used when both phases are dispersed phase and continuous one both are liquids in an emulsion one liquid the dispersed phase is dispersed in another phase that is continuous phase for example emulsions includes like milk and some cutting fluids for the metal working the word emulsion come from a latin word that is for to milk as a milk is an emulsion of fat and water along with other components two liquids can form a different types of emulsions as an example oil and water can form first an oil in water emulsion whereas the oil is the dispersed phase and water is the dispersion medium lipoproteins as implemented by an complex living organisms is the one of the example of this category while second example they can form water in oil emulsion wherein water is the dispersed phase and oil is the external phase that is continuous phase multiple emulsions are also possible including a water in oil in water emulsion while another type of category that is oil in water in oil emulsion let's move towards the classification of emulsions first class is a w by o emulsions in w by o types of emulsions they are the type of emulsions wherein water is an internal phase while oil is an external phase they can be identified by adding an oil soluble dye if oil soluble the dye colors the whole solution in the second type of category that is o by w type of emulsions these emulsions have an oil as an internal phase and water as an external phase and this emulsion can be identified by electrical conducting nature since water is in a good conductor when an electrode is a place it shows conductivity indicating it to an external phase third category that is a multiple emulsion w by o by w that is water in oil in water type of emulsion wherein water comprises 
टू लेयर्स वाइल ऑयल इज अ सेंटर लेयर वाइल फोर्थ कैटेगरी दैट इज ऑयल इन वाटर इन ऑयल टाइप ऑफ इमल्शन हेयर वाटर इज अ सेंटर एंड ऑयल ऑक्यूपाइज इनर मोस्ट एंड आउटर मोस्ट लेयर दीज आर ऑल टाइप्स ऑफ इमल्शन लेट्स मूव टूवर्ड्स एडवांटेजेस ऑफ इमल्शन First advantage that is medicines having an unpleasant taste and color odor can be made more palatable for oral administration in the form of emulsion for let's example castor oil second emulsion provides the protection against the drugs which are prone to oxidation or hydrolysis third added advantage is various external preparations such as creams solutions foams aerosols are formulated as emulsions fourth one that is the sterile stable intravenous emulsions containing fats carbohydrates and vitamins can be administered to the patients who are unable to take them orally these are all about advantages what are the disadvantages associated with the emulsions first that is preparation needs to be shaken before the use second that is measuring the devices are needed for the administration third a degree of technical accuracy is needed to measure a dose fourth that is the storage conditions may affect the stability of the preparations now let's move towards the module 3 that is the dosage form mixture a mixture is a mutual incorporation of two or more substances without chemical union the physical characteristics of each of the component being written a mechanical mixture is a mixture of particles or masses distinguishable as such under the microscope or in another way a physical mixture is more intimate mixture of molecule as in the case of gases and many solutions in chemistry a mingling together of two or more substances without the occurrence of a reaction by which they would lose their individual properties that is without permanent gain or lose of electrons in pharmacy a preparation consisting of liquid holding an insoluble medical substance in suspension by means of acacia sugar or some other viscid material that is all about this mixture style what kind of mixtures are there generally two kinds of mixtures are there which are represented as an either homogeneous or heterogeneous a homogeneous mixture is a type of mixture in which composition is uniform and every part has the same properties while in heterogeneous mixture is a type of mixture in which components can be seen as there are two or more phases present one example of the mixture is air air is a homogeneous mixture of gaseous substances like nitrogen oxygen and smaller amounts of other substances while salt sugar and many other substances dissolve in water to form homogeneous mixture a homogeneous mixture in which there is both a solute and solvent present and is also known as a solution a mixture have any amount of ingredient this is all about the mixtures now friends one of the important class that is a dosage form from sprays it is generally recognized as an aerosol how you will define the aerosol an aerosol is defined as a dispersed phase system in which very fine solid particle or liquid droplets get dispersed in the propellant that is gas which acts as in a continuous phase or simply it is a system which expels the contents from the container that depends on the pressure development by compressed or liquefied gas or simply it represents as an aerosol is a pressurized dosage form containing one or more therapeutic active ingredients which upon actuation emit a fine dispersion of liquid or solid material in gaseous medium which containing smaller than 50 micrometer particle size the dispersed phase that is solid or liquid and continuous phase is always gas or propellant and aerosol is also known as pressurized packages 
pressurized package or pressurized dosage forms. The term pressurized package is generally used when referring to the aerosol container or completed product. Pressure is developed to a aerosol system through a use of one or more liquefied or gaseous propellant. Advantage Main advantage that is the required quantity of content can be easily withdrawn from the package without contamination or exposure of the remaining material. Aerosols are easy and convenient to apply and can be administered without the help of others. Main is the onset of action is very fast as compared to other dosage form because the medicament is directly applied to the affected area or part. The dispersion of the medicament is very good. Due to the close packaging of aerosols, there is no manual or direct contact with the medicament. Aerosol form can avoid decomposition or inactivation of the drug by the pH or enzymatic action of the stomach or intestine and also can avoid the first pass metabolism. A specific amount of dose or drug can be removed from the container without contamination of remaining contents that is the biggest advantage. Stability can be enhanced for those substances adversely affected by atmospheric oxygen or moisture. Hydrolysis of the medicament can be prevented since propellant do not contain any water. Oxidation is prevented as no air is present in the container. Sterility can be maintained because no microorganisms can enter even when wall is open. The meter wall can release the contents in the controlled and uniform manner. The aerosol containers protects the photosensitive medicaments except clear glass containers. For the inhalation purpose, a fine mist of the drug is produced. The rapid volatilization of the propellant provides a cooling, refreshing effect. Formulation of aerosol and maintaining wall control, the physical form and the particle size of the emitted product may be controlled by this. Irritations can be reduced by application of topical aerosol medication in a uniform thin layer to the skin without touching the affected area. Now let's move towards the disadvantages of aerosol system. Main disadvantage it is an what? These are the cost effective. Disposal of empty aerosol containers are difficult due to the volatility of the propellants can irritate the injured skin. Some individuals may be sensitive to the propellants and who use an inhalation aerosol. The fluorinated hydrocarbons may cause toxic effect on rapid and repeated use of the aerosol product. Aerosol packets must be kept away from the temperature and fire because it may develop high pressure inside the container that lead to the explosion. If the drug is not soluble in the propellant, the formulation is difficult to make. Sometimes propellant may cause toxic reactions if the therapy is continued for the long period of time. This is mainly related with advantages, disadvantages of aerosolic system. Now friends, we will move towards the next module that is module 5, Inhalations. The drawing of air or other substances into the lungs, it is the inhalation type delivery. The drawing of an aerosolized drug into the lungs with the breath. Any drug or solution of drug administered as by means of nebulizers, or aerosols by the nasal or oral respiratory route, it is the dosage form that is inhalation type. What are the characteristics of inhalation type dosage form? It is also known as aerosol inhalation that is pressurized dosage form or meter dose inhalers administered by the nasal or oral respiratory route. Let's talk about some advantages of inhalations. Local action or bronchial tree is the target site. Rapid action, it is the main advantage. No first pass metabolism. This is an again biggest advantage. Ability to precisely target the disease area. While some disadvantages are also associated with the inhalations, that is inaccurate in dosage intake. 
difficult to handle while those are in expensive now friends let's move towards the another interesting module that is paints paints are the liquids for the application to the skin or mucosa usually with the soft brush skin paints often have a volatile solvent that evaporates quickly to leave a dry and resinous film of the medicament while throat paints are more viscous due to the high content of glycerin which being sticky adheres to the affected site and prolongs the action of medicament what are the examples associated with the paints that is a liquor iodine throat paints glim iodine potassium throat paints coral type that is tannic acid throat paints new force that is clotrimazole mouth paint candied clotrimazole mouth paints these are all about the paints example now we will move towards interesting module that is labeling of dispense product as such the module says title about the label what is mean by label label means a display of printed information which is securely affixed to the containers and primarily packaging containing the medications label should provide the patient with all necessary information for appropriate use of medicine let's look towards general labeling requirement cautionary and advisory labels special instructions for the different types of products mainly the information given on the label should be accurate legible intelligible and adequate and relevant what are the general labeling requirements for the dispense products general labeling requirements for the dispense products always includes the name of the preparation the quantity of the preparation and instructions for the patients it also indicates the name of patient the date of dispensing the name and address of pharmacy now let's move towards the conclusion with all these information we can conclude the topic today we discuss about the dispensing and compounding of dosage form in which we deal suspension in detail emulsion and second module third module represents the mixture fourth one for the spray fifth one for the inhalation type sixth one includes the paints and seven that is labeling of dispense products so dear students don't forget to review all of them in your self study if you have miss any of the module or content you may log on to our website that is www dot cc dot nic dot in to download videos faqs lor and other contents so that you can stay updated with this chapter keep studying very good bye